Hi everyone! In this video, I'm doing my April 2021 bullet journal setup. I'm using watercolor for this. This month's theme is inspired by Venice, Grand Canal, and boats. At first, I was having trouble coming up with an idea for April. You know that saying, April showers bring May flowers? I thought about something to do with showers or like rain, and that led me to think of water. The water became a river, and the river became a boat, and the boat became Venice. So yeah, that's how I came up with Venice and the Grand Canal. I started with the lightest yellow color first, then I added darker colors once the yellow layer dried. The reason why I did yellow first was because it allows the yellow color to be as bright as possible. You know, yellow is a color that gets contaminated with other colors really easily, so I wanted to put it down on a clean blank page first in order to prevent that. The technique for watercolor is to put the lighter colors down first and slowly build up to darker and darker colors with each layer. You have to do this because watercolor is translucent. This means that lighter colors won't show up if you layer them on top of really dark colors. I waited for each layer to dry before doing the darker layer on top. You should wait until the paper is completely dry or else you'll get backwash or cauliflower effects, which is like an uneven patch that looks like a water stain. Actually, this isn't really a Venice theme. There are so many beautiful things in the city of Venice, and it would be too much for one theme. So I just chose one aspect to focus on, which are the gondola boats. Originally, I was going to make this theme all about gondolas, but obviously you can't have a boat without a canal. So I changed the theme to be more focused on the Grand Canal as a whole. Why did I choose the Grand Canal at night? Well, that's because I like the colors. Think about how yellow and purple are complementary colors, so they go really well together, right? Complementary colors are colors across from each other from the color wheel. Have you ever been to Italy or Venice? I've never been there, but I rolled a gondola. I think it was at night when I rolled it. That experience was the main inspiration for this theme. I really miss traveling, but I have to wait until it's safe again to go traveling again. Usually the bottom part of the sky is a bit lighter, so I added some purple. And I added darker blue spots on top to make some cloud-like shapes. Do you see those splotches and uneven texture on the sky? That's because the paper couldn't take too much water, so it bled through in some spots. Also, once my painting was finished, the pages were super wrinkly, and it made the bullet journal pages a lot bulkier. It might be better to paint yours on a separate watercolor paper if you want to avoid these, but I think these problems got a lot better once it dried. For the buildings, I made a black strip, but went over it with more paint once it dried. This made the colors mix together so it looks like a darker brown. I should have added the yellow first, but I forgot, so I'm doing it on top of the brown buildings. The building colors are different shades of brown. Some are orange or reddish brown. I made these colors by mixing them together. Be careful not to paint over the yellow windows. I tried my best to avoid the rectangles, but some of them got contaminated. I'm using a dark color to add lines and details to the building. Later, I'll add more precise details to the pin after it dries. This purple line here will make a smooth transition between the black and brown colors. Here's the little boat. I'm painting the water in the darker color now. This is more like a semi-realistic watercolor. I was using a reference photo for the Grand Canal at night to make this. Even if you're not trying to go for realism, a reference photo can be super helpful, so don't forget to look one up online. I'm still learning about watercolor and I think this will help me improve since I'm going to be painting every week for my weekly spreads. My watercolor brand is a mixture of gouache and watercolor, so it can be used as both depending on how much water you add. I used the paint as a regular watercolor by adding lots of water, then I reduced the water to use it as a gouache, and that's how I did the highlights. Gouache is like an opaque and thick version of watercolor paint. Now I'm using a fine liner to add details to the buildings. I'm sketching out the letters for the title. I used very little water to make an opaque white. A cursive font feels perfect for this theme, so I wrote April in a calligraphy font. Then I just went back over it with a black pen to help it stand out more. 
I also added a thicker shadow on the right side of the letters. Tada! This took a long time, and it looks really great. On to the next two pages. These next two pages go together. So on the left, I'm drawing a one-page calendar. I usually do two pages for a calendar, but this month isn't that busy, so I'm making a smaller one. I really like bullet journaling because of this customization. It allows me to adjust my spreads to my own needs. On the bottom, I'm drawing some building. This is going to be the Grand Canal. I'm going to make the Grand Canal across both pages, so I drew the buildings on the other page as well. Of course, I had to add a gondola. On top of the boat, I drew some people riding it and the person who was steering it. Drawing this really reminded me of the time I went on the gondola ride. On the second page, I'm making a test tracker. This is a table where I can write my student assignments, tests, and things like that. You can also use this table for many other things such as tracking expenses or exercise. For the title, I'm going for a simple cursive font. This is simple because I don't want it to clash with the detail and colorful paintings below it. I made a mistake here, but I can easily cover it up with some extra paper. I got this paper from my bullet journal when I cut out a page to make the Dutch door spread. You'll see that at the end of this video. I'm going to start with yellow for the water. You don't have to worry about making it a specific shape. Just make some random color blobs everywhere and we'll color them with darker colors later. For the water, I like to make multiple layers. The first layer is a really pale purple. This layer probably won't be visible in the final result, but it helps me shape the lines and streaks going across the yellow patches. Think of it like a sketch. Once that layer dried, I'm going in with a much darker purple. This is going to be the main color which covers the surface of the water. I use little flicking motions to make the streaks across the yellow part. Now this is the last layer which is adding darker parts to the water. Water isn't just one solid color. It has darker shadows and some lighter highlights, so I'm trying to replicate that here. Okay, now moving on to the buildings. I'm starting off with some bright base colors. Later they will become darker colors. This is just a simple flat wash for base layer. When I was looking up references for Venetian buildings, I saw a lot of gothic architecture and really intricate detailed buildings. That looked really pretty, but for this theme, I decided to keep it simple. If I put too many detailed things in one painting, it can get really messy. That's why I decided to keep the buildings very simple throughout this theme. Okay, now for the gondola. I decided to paint it black, but left a few yellow highlights on the edge to make it visible against the darkness. If it was pure black, I think that would have been too hard to see. I'm using a black pen to add lines and details on the buildings. I also outlined some windows to make the edges straighter. Now let's finish up the calendar. As you can see, I'm keeping it very simple. I tied everything together by making some beige color for the headings. This is the same color I mix for the building. And now we're done. On to the brain dump. This is a two page brain dump page where I can write my ideas, notes, video plans, or anything I want. I usually do a one page spread, but last month I completely filled up my page and I realized that I needed more room. On the top, I'm adding these swirly decorations. They look really fancy, right? I'm using the brush pen to create thicker strokes. This method is faster than just using a fineliner. Okay, this is probably my favorite part of the spread. I'm drawing a gondola boat sketch in black and white. While drawing this, I kept getting Inktober vibes. Back when I was doing the Inktober art challenge, I only made black and white drawings with a pen. So I drew everything like this. I know that the gondola boat anatomy isn't completely accurate. I looked up some of the names of the part on Google, but I don't know if it's correct or not. To shade the boat, I used different density of lines. I made the lines spaced far apart for the gray color. I'm not going for a realistic look with this. I'm just doing a sketchy kind of drawing, which I think looks really nice. I did this for the black and white buildings on the bottom. For the shading, I made little strokes and hatch marks like these.
I didn't want to leave the drawings like this because it looks too plain, so I'm adding some watercolor. On the bottom, I'm making the water so it looks kind of like it's on the Grand Canal. I didn't want to color it the whole way across the page. I just made a little patch underneath each object. I also want to keep this very simple, so I deleted the yellow parts of the water. Now for some bright colors. Yellow is like the second main color of this theme, so of course we have to add it. But this yellow is a bit more muted, it's more like an orangey brown. I chose this color because it looks like gold, so I can use it for the golden borders of this page. I also add some to the buildings. This page is like the most simple. This is also my favorite so far. On to the next. Another two page spread. This is the habit tracker and sleep tracker page. The top half is the habit tracker which is where I'll track how often I do my habit. Sometimes I forget to track my habit. If you have that problem like me, then I advise you to lower the amount of habits you track. Here I'm only making 6 mini calendars. When I get more consistent with filling these out, I can go back to tracking more habits. The bottom half of the page is the sleep tracker. This is a bar graph that I use to track my bedtimes and wake up times. I'll show you how to use this at the end. There are states at the bottoms and times on the side, with many bars to fill in. Next, I'm making the buildings. These are going on the side of the sleep tracker. I want to make this look like the sleep tracker is part of the buildings when I fill it in. The height of the buildings is about the same height as the sleep tracker. Now I'll paint the water below it. This time I'm making it a lot simpler. The water only has yellow and purple colors. And for the buildings, I colored them the same way as always. You can use markers or watercolor when highlighting the habits. I mixed a light tan color for this. I also added it to the titles which makes it look a lot less plain. I forgot to add washi tape to this spread, but I added some off camera later. Here's how you use the sleep tracker. First, make a line where you went to bed. Next, make a line when you wake up the next day. Then I would fill it in. At the end of the month, you will see how the top lines are lower or higher which indicates if you slept later or earlier. Same goes for the bottom wake up time. The habit tracker is just filling in a box. The next page is the weekly spread. I'm going to make this into a Dutch door spread. A Dutch door is when you cut off half of the page. So I'm folding a line and then cutting it. This will create a flap which you can write on. You'll see how I use it later. Right now I'm making a painting on the edges of the page. This painting will be part of the same scene. I'm leaving a space in the center for my boxes later. While the yellow layer is drying, I'm making the weekly boxes. I'm doing the boxes on each side of the Dutch door. This flap gives you a lot of room when writing boxes. The first title was too thick, so I'm making the other titles with a thinner pen. This is actually my first time doing a Dutch door spread. I was always skeptical about it, because it seems like you're wasting an extra page. I mean, you're literally cutting up half a page, right? But that's actually not so wasteful, because I ended up using the part I cut off for covering up my mistakes on other spreads. So don't forget to save your extra piece if you do a Dutch door spread. Anyways, I think a Dutch door spread is only good from time to time. I think that it would be wasteful if you do it every week because all those extra pages getting cut off makes you run out of pages in your bullet journal faster. But I think Dutch doors are really good for adding decorations on the page because it gives you a lot of room. I'm not worrying about going inside the boxes for writing because I'm going to cover them with a black border later. Also, isn't this giving you Starry Night by Van Gogh vibes? I think it's because of the yellow and blue in the sky. Add some orange to the yellow water to make a deeper color. Once that dries, you can go back on top with deep purple colors. I'm using a very small brush for this so that I can get fine strokes. For these buildings, I decided to do something different. I'm making an orangey yellow undercoat. The undercoat will get covered up later, but it will make the colors warmer. 
I left some spaces for the windows and the yellow undercoat. Then I'm coloring the buildings normally. The boat is going to be mostly black, but I added yellow for highlight. I think it's really hard to make the black boat stand out against the dark water. One of my methods was trying to make the boat darker than the water, but it really stands out once you add the yellow highlight. To clean up the insides of the boxes, I'm going to color it with this black border. This will make it look a lot more polished. In the final result of the buildings, you'll see that the buildings are less dull than the buildings that I made before. I think it's because of the yellow undercoat. I wish I did that same thing for all of my other spreads. If you want to ride a gondola, would you rather ride it at night or in the day? I feel like you wouldn't be able to see anything at night, so I would rather do it in the day. Comment down below what you think. If you want your painting to dry faster, use a hairdryer. I didn't have to use a hairdryer for any of my spreads because the paint dried super quickly. I think it's because of my paper. A few highlights here and there for some lights. I didn't use pure white, but I mixed it with some yellow to get a pale yellow color. Here's the final result. I really like this page. Now it's time for the final flip through. This is the most detailed and most time-consuming spread I've ever done, but I really like the final result. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed. The weekly page is cool. I made it so that the paintings connect. Then you have the Dutch door in the middle. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.